Okay, so uh, this video is going to be a brief introduction into depth of field, what it is, and sort of basically how it works. Um, first off, the definition of uh, depth of field that I included in the announcement is the range of distances from the lens that are rendered in an acceptable focus. So I'd like to use this video to unpack that statement, uh, basically. So the first thing you need to know is that when a camera focuses on an object, so here's my camera and here's my uh, goblet or wine glass with a gigantic base, but we'll call it a goblet because the base is so big. Um, when the camera focuses on the object, it can only really focus on one particular distance at any given time. So in this case, I drew a vertical line here and a vertical line here that sort of signify the center lines of those two objects. And what that distance is, is the focus is the object distance and the object distance is the the distance from the camera lens to the center of the thing that's focused on or to to the focus point the focal point and the focal point is right here this distance right here the thing that your your camera lens is focused on is the focal point so the focal point is represented by this vertical line and the overall distance between the focal point and the camera is the object distance, A and C. -E. There we go. Improve my spelling. Um, so that's the first thing that you need to know. Um, despite the fact that your camera lens can only focus on one particular point at any given time, there is a range of focuses in front of the focal point, a range of distances in front of the focal point and behind the focal point that are rendered in an acceptable focus. And that is really your depth of field. But to understand that, we have to know what acceptable focus means. An acceptable focus means uh, that an object looks like it's in focus even though it's technically not. And this is pretty common. The reason acceptable focus occurs is because the lens is sharper than the recording system, i.e. the resolution of the lens is better than the resolution of the recording system. So if the resolution of the um, of the camera of the f f if the resolution of the sensor or the resolution of the film isn't high enough you won't be able to tell if there's a difference in focus in certain circumstances okay so the depth of field then becomes split across two areas all right you've got the bit in front and the bit behind so that depth of field could be considered, I'll abbreviate it here, depth of field, the ex range of acceptable focuses. So we'll just call that acceptable. All right. And it breaks down roughly this way, geometrically. One third of your depth of field occurs in front of the focal point, and two thirds of your depth of field occurs behind the focal point. So, for instance, if the overall depth of field from this point to this point was 30 feet, 10 of those feet would be in front of the focal point and 20 of those feet would be behind the focal point. With that said, you can have a broad depth of field and you can have a narrow depth of field. So, we may end up in a situation where we have this. A really wide range it's still broken up two-thirds on this behind and one-third in front of roughly broad and you can have a narrow depth of field two-thirds one-third And you, th these are uh, settings you can control using your camera or your lens selection or where you choose to place your body in relation to the object you're focusing on. So depth of field is something that can be controlled by the photographer and it's one way we use to really manipulate the quality of an image uh, without using the computer and using the, the camera itself. Um, an example of a, a time when you might use a very broad depth of field is if you were doing, say, uh, landscape photography. Oftentimes in landscape photography, you want to make sure that everything is, is rendered in focus. So you use, you'll use settings that allow for a very broad depth of field and everything in your picture will then be sharp. 
An example of when you might use a narrow depth of field is in portrait photography. I'm certain all of you have seen uh, images of people where the face is really, really sharp and then the background is really, really blurry. In that case, the photographer is using a narrow depth of field to, uh, to separate the subject from the background. Okay. Again, I reiterate, these are things that you can control and these are uh, topics about which you're going to have to make choices. And uh, in the how best to do that depends on the uh, equipment you're using at any given time. And that will be that's a topic that will be discussed further later. Thank you.